Allah said in the Quran, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiya la'allakum taakilun. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. So, the language of Quran from above is Arabic. Anything other than Arabic, you can't really say. It is 100% ad verbitum, so-called words of Allah. Swedish far-right politician Ramos Paladan has burnt a copy of the so-called Quran outside the Turkish embassy. Now let's take a closer look into what he burnt. He burnt a copy of the Quran written by N. J. Daoud. Note the word Quran written on it. He wrote it K-O-R-A-N. But the Muslims overwhelmingly use Q-U-R-A-N to translate Quran, the word, into English. Nevertheless, I did read N.J. Daud's Quranic translation long time ago. And I think his translation wasn't a very good job in translating it from Arabic into English. He translated the Quran by his own choice of words. In his translation of Quran, you can't find a single Arabic verse. You can't find a single Arabic word. Usually, in almost all cases, if you read a translation of the Quran, you will see there are Arabic words on a right panel in every page. But in his translation of the Quran, you can't find a single Arabic word even. And who was this N.J. Daud? He was an Iraqi Jewish man. He was not even a Muslim. So basically, his Quran is not the word of God as per Quran chapter 12, verse 2, which I just recited. And his translation is questionable. But now Muslims are protesting around the world, led by Turkey, for this man having burnt a copy of the Quran outside the Turkish embassy in Sweden. So why is Turkey angry when Erdogan regime had turned a, a famous church, Hagi Sophia, illegally into a mosque? Were Christians in a position to bargain with the Muslim invaders when they took over Istanbul and slaughtered many Christians in there? No. So Erdogan doesn't have any right to protest against this burning of the Quran. You may say the burning of any book is not your cup of tea. But the question is, does he have the right to burn a book as a mark of protest if he's not harming anyone, if there is a police protection, if the police were notified beforehand, and if he's not damaging any public property? My position is yes. But as a scholar, my preferred way of protesting is with a pen. But why do we see that there are many Muslims extremists, of course, who want to kill writers, critics, by using the sword or knife. Even this Ramos Paladin was once attacked with a knife brandishing man. Why there is always knife used? Why was Salman Rushdie attacked with a knife? Critics like Ovijit Roy were killed by knife attacks. Because Quran instructs you specifically what to hit, when to hit, how to hit, and how to even crucify the dead body. There are verses after verses instructing you to hit the fingertips, the back of your he head, etc. So why do we always see when the Muslims protest, they call for death? They declare fatwas to hunt down critics of Islam. 
And the critics of Islam are banished from their lands. Their books are burned. Thousands of Muslims took to the streets in Birmingham, England in 1989 to stage the burning of the book written by Salman Rushdie, the satanic verses. Why did Muslims rejoice it then? So if you do not believe in any religion, why do you have to respect it? Why Islam always wants special protection? We preach loving of all people, love Muslims, love Christians, love Jewish people, love atheists. But we should also have the right to criticize their views. That's freedom of speech. Quran vehemently criticizes beliefs of other religions. All the lovey-jovey verses like respect other deities, lakum dinukum waliyadin, your religion to you, like Rafid din, there's no force in religion. But still, those verses were literally abrogated later on. Why can't we criticize that then? Any activity, if you don't like it, any sort of protest means, if you don't like it, deal with intellectually. Let law enforcing agencies deal with it. Why do we always see then violent means of protest from the Muslim society? And why do we see silence as a code of conduct in the face of evil by the so-called overwhelming peace-loving majority of Muslims? Why? Why don't they say, do not burn public property to protest? Do not kill writers to show your resentment. Respond intellectually. Why don't we hear this from vast majority of Muslims? Why do we always see when we read threats, abuses from many Muslims, overwhelming peace-loving Muslims remain silent. So if you remain silent, with your silence, you are approving of their means to harass, kill the critics of Islam. You are supporting it, you are condoning it, and you are also saying with your silence, you approve of it. Why the double standard? Why? Even after all this, the man is a Swedish citizen and he stood there with the permission from the Swedish police. There is no blasphemy law in Sweden. Even if the Swedish head of state disagrees with his means, there are laws to deal with it. You can't blackmail a country for that reason. Turkey is trying to blackmail Sweden because Sweden wants to join NATO and Turkey wants to blackmail the entire country to accept their derailed views about freedom of speech. No religion should enjoy a special privilege. And Erdogan, if you want to criticize Swedish ways, you must come with clean hands first. When you are carrying out atrocities against the Kurdish Muslims, clean your own backyard first.